evening, good evening, good evening. We are so excited. We have some great, great, great information coming to you guys. We have today Mr. Kenneth Denari White the second. Just a little bit about Mr. Denari was born and raised in Dallas, Texas, where he grew up with a heart and soul for music. From being in his school band to being a praise and worship leader in church, Denari has always loved the joy, expression, and freedom that music brings. He began to compose classical music in his junior high school years. And this eventually led to an interest in music production. He eventually attended Full Sail University, receiving his bachelor's in recording arts and science, woo -woo, where he learned the behind the scenes work of the music industry. Now Denari resides in the ATL, Atlanta, Georgia in the house, where he is currently producing mixing and mastering several projects. So I can't say enough how excited I am. So the idea and goal, we inspire you to explore the world of music. We're gonna be sharing, and this is an opportunity to ask questions or if you need to come back and get some follow-up, we're here to give information. We're here to share with students what it took to get to where he is, all of the things that he's come across. What were some of the road uh, hurdles? What were some of the great things? What were some of the things that was unexpected that happened that you didn't even realize? Oh, this is really happening behind the scenes. So I think we're going to have a lot of good information. Those of y'all we see up front on stage, but sometimes we don't know what all it takes to get there. So Without further ado, we have Mr. Kenny Denari White. Yes. Hello, what's going on? How's everybody doing? Uh, I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you so much uh, for reaching out to me for this opportunity. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you for coming. All right. So um, I'm going to try to keep this pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Okay. Um, and kind of talk through some of the systems that you can use as far as uh, music production. Um, kind of talk about some of the differences in the sound quality that you that you'll experience, um, and some of the the filing and and things like uh, what we call plugins um, that you would use to create like different effects and and stuff like that. Um, and then lastly, just like some some quick little tips and tools that I have to use for myself um, as it as it uh, comes to music production. Um, so yeah, so pretty much like she was saying, you know, graduated from Full Sail, uh, bachelor's degree in recording arts and science. Um, the background behind the, the, the music industry is very, very active. Um, there's a lot of um, pieces that, that go into play when it comes to, you know, the face of the music. So if you're an artist, there's probably at least a good hundred something people, maybe even more than that, that are working behind you just to make sure everything is working properly. Um, and this stems from even production to uh, setting up mics to uh, making sure your stage performances are on, on point and on key, um, you know, all, type, all types of, of different stuff. Um, what I also wanna make sure people, people understand is that you do not necessarily need all of that to make it. Um, I know that's kind of a big thing when it comes to the music industry, like, oh, I need to have the finest equipment. I need to have, you know, the, the bells and whistles of everything. Like a lot of that stuff is not necessary depending on what you're trying to do. Um, if you're really passionate about it, you will kind of operate in what you have and then build from there, uh, which I always encourage people to do. That's honestly what I've been doing. Um, some of my people would tell you, I used to record music in this little Skype microphone um, like years ago when I was a sophomore in, in uh, high school and the quality was terrible. You know, I wasn't really producing as much at the time. So I was looking for beats online and all the, it, it was just, it, but it was so humbling of an experience. Okay. I look at where I am now using something like, like this. Um, I'm just very grateful. Um, 
So to tell you kind of what this is, uh, this is Logic Pro X. This is uh, what they call a DAW or a DAW. Um, there are a couple of different ones that you can use. Um, the most prominent one, of course, is Pro Tools. Everybody at some point has probably heard of that. Right. Um, Logic kind of has, especially in recent years, really kind of put itself on that same caliber as Pro Tools. Um, there are some additional ones, you know, um, a lot of beginners especially tend to use like Fruity Loops because um, it's very user friendly. I actually started out on Fruity Loops uh, okay. when it came to production. Um, and then you have Ableton and, um, you know, just a bunch of different different uh, things you can use. Okay, so you mentioned Fruity Loops, Ableton, um, but you like and you prefer Logic. Logic. Can you tell me your experience between First of all, maybe we should even take that a step further and kind of back it up. What is this platform and why do you use this platform? There may be someone that's watching it that really is interested interested in kind of like, oh, they know friends make beats or this, that, other, but they don't understand the platforms that you're speaking of. So let's talk about what it is and why it's necessary and then why you choose and have a preference and what maybe what, what you like specifically about that versus Pro Tools, which is one of the popular ones. Actually, I'm familiar with and use Pro Tools, but um, why why that one over Ableton uh, or et cetera? Why your preferences? Got you. So, um, so basically, this is where you create, essentially. This is where you kind of have your creative space, your creative freedom, if you will, um, to just build on, you know, different sounds, different um, um, instruments, you know, different plugins and um, effects, all, all that type of stuff. You can pretty much do, do that in every uh, DAW that I listed. So in Pro Tools, Logic, um, Fruity Loops, Ableton, um, and all the other different ones that they have out there. Um, so this is your creative space. This is what you use to create. This is like the foundation of your creation. <laughs> right. um, for me regarding the preference portion of it, um, I personally prefer Logic just because um, I like that Logic is consistent with providing new sounds. Um, you know, Logic is kind of like a one-time purchase deal. You buy it and then they just kind of update it as time goes on. You don't really have to pay for any updates. Uh, they, they, they just kind of build on their library. Um, so I really, really love that aspect of it. I can't really speak for some of the other um, DAWs like Fruity Loops I haven't used in years um, and Pro Tools I've kind of strayed away from over the last like maybe five, six years. Um, and I've never used Ableton myself, but um, I just know Logic is very, um, very, like I said, simple, very user friendly. Um, they continue to build out your sound library so you don't have to go looking too far to right. okay. uh, find sounds and stuff like that. So. Okay, okay. Well, before we go too deep into conversation, I think the whole idea and concept that we like to start out with is a demonstration. Demonstrate to us as much as you can, you know, with um, the space and time that we have a little bit about what this looks like in action. Right. So, um, open up one of these MIDI files. Okay, when you say MIDI files, there may be someone that may not know what that means. Tell us what you're talking about when you say MIDI. So a MIDI file is essentially, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this without, <laughs> <laughs> it sounded really complicated because uh, it's really simple. Um, it's basically just um, a space, uh, not a space, let me not say that. It's basically just a file that you create within the session. So um, unlike when you are doing, let's say an audio file. So just like a regular audio file, let's say you're recording your voice down or something like that. Um, MIDI, you actually get to move the sound around and you know pitch it and, and see um, you know, how you want it to sound. Okay. So you kind of have, it's a bit more like you got your hands in the pot. Whereas like with an audio file, once it's recorded, like unless you record it again, you're just, that's just what the audio file is. Um, there are some, some things that you can do later down the road um, to edit audio files, um, but that kind of comes way later down the production line. Okay. Um, 
Midi is is literally like you can, as you can clearly see, I have all these little notes in here. Um, and this, you can see this little box up here. This is a MIDI file. So I can, if you hear this sound, you hear this note, it's a C3, um, but I can actually manipulate the note. So I can move it kind of wherever I want and um, whatever capacity that I want. So if I wanted to, um, let me, I don't wanna do this. Yeah, so let's say I wanted to select all of this but I wanted to do the same thing um, higher. So I, all I need to do is just drag it all up. So it's a very easy, easy way to like change, change chords, change a uh, key, you know, to modulate and, and do things like that. Um, that's kind of really the gist of it. You just kind of, it's just a, a nice little um, creative thing. Um, but yeah, you really get to build build out your your own stuff in there in the MIDI file. Okay, don't want to interrupt too much. Oh, we want to hear this, <laughs> see the demonstration of what Mr. Kenny Denari does. This, what does that look like overall? And then we can kind of go back into some breaking it down into some information. So I don't know if you'll be able to actually see this. So um, Logic actually has a uh, couple of different ways that you can create the music. So if you see this little keyboard right here, um, most people will have like a MIDI keyboard, which I actually need to get for myself, but I actually create, I don't, I don't think you can really see it. Okay. This, so I do it directly from um, the keyboard on the computer. Okay. Um, again, humble beginnings. <laughs> okay. It works so though, huh? It does. It's for you. Yeah, so. But then that's also good information for, for students to know that you can start with the keyboard if you do not have a MIDI keyboard or MIDI controller. Mm -hmm. This comes directly with it. Um, you don't have to do anything special to obtain this. Um, so, so it comes right with it. You can just kind of get right to work. So if you see here, it also kind of gives you the, the letters of the keys that you can use. So... Um, I don't know if it's gonna let it play just because of the way we have it set up on Zoom. Um, it'll probably only play like from what's already laid down. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially you'll be able to kind of hear your sound. Like as you can see, I'm pressing the keys and you see it's like a piano basically. Right. And it'll let you change. Like if you wanna go higher, you just kind of click up here. Um, the higher the number, obviously, the higher it's going to take you in the, the section of the piano. Um, the lower the number, the lower it will take you. Um, and then it has some, some various little things. Like, obviously, most pianos have a pedal. Um, this does not have, <laughs> have a pedal. Um, but you do have the option to sustain your notes here. Um, and then you can also change. Um, the they call it a velocity in this program but it's essentially kind of like the the volume of it so do you want it to be a little bit softer do you want it to be a little bit harder uh, you know as a piano player like you you kind of have free range to kind of control what is loud and what is what is not mm -hmm. uh, but this process is a little bit more um kind of manual if you will you have to uh really kind of listen in and figure out how you want things to be. Now that's also only because I'm using this. So right. once you have like a MIDI keyboard, um, you know, it'll let you kind of set things up to where the volume at which you play it is the, the volume that it's gonna actually come out as. Okay. So is this that we're looking at something you created or something you're working on currently or something you've done in the past? Uh, this is actually something I'm currently working on. Um, it is actually, if the Lord said the same, it's going to be a song for me, um, okay. that I myself. So I will play a little bit of it for you and kind of walk you through, um, some of the sounds and how you can, uh, kind of clean up the session, if you will. Okay, good.
snippet of that. Okay. Um, so pretty much kind of walk you through uh, some of the stuff that you're looking at. Um, this is kind of, if you have ever seen one of those big sound boards or big mixing boards in a studio, okay. um, this is essentially what all of this is. So you have um, your plugins that you see up here. We'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. Um, you have your um, oxes or buses, you know, kind of depends on how you want to refer to those. Um, you have your faders down here and you have your panning, um, panning dials, if you will, um, here. Um, so this is kind of just like the whole session um, and you can kind of manipulate the volume and, um, you know, if you want to, excuse me, um, duplicate or uh, remake another track with the same, excuse me, um, plugins as a previous track, you can build that here. You can also build it up here. And I, I'm more prone to being up here, but I did want to at least uh, kind of show this little, little area here. Um, I primarily use this area just for volume control uh, for multiple um, channels, um, which is basically each one of these little things here that's highlighted um, is considered a channel. Um, some people call them strips as well, um, but they call channels. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I pretty much mainly use this to manipulate the, the volume of the overall session or different um, different tracks. Um, so I'm gonna come out of this. Or did you have any questions or anything regarding this section? I I don't want to interrupt too much because I was just kind of letting you demonstrate what you do. Um, I mean, there's a lot of components to it, so I don't know if we're gonna get yeah. Too detailed, but just in general, I know you have three screens showing to so maybe um, share what, what we have over here in the corner. So this is um, actually some of the stuff I was going to get into next, which is... Oh, okay. See, I'm going I'm to stay back. Let you do your thing. <laughs> uh, this is an EQ. Um, this is one of, the, one of the really, really, really important things when it comes to the mixing and mastering portion of uh, production. Um, you this is what cleans up your audio so if you don't eq it's going to sound really really muffled and really really um just like flat if you will it won't really be um there's not going to be any sweetness to the to the sound um can you demonstrate or is it asking too much to demonstrate i can demonstrate so okay. um you may not hear that much of a difference obviously because we're you know virtual um but just to let me pull it up. And this was another thing I'm going to get into shortly, but I'm going to turn both of these off. Um, and then you, I'm going to let you hear the audio without those on. Like I said, you, you may not hear much of a difference because of us being virtual. Mm -hmm. These are kind of in the final stage of uh, mixing. This is like just a final cleanup of the entire audio process. Um, but if I were to get dramatic with it, so I, I'll, I'll do a bit kind of, a, kind of a more dramatic change, if you will. Um, so we do something a little crazy here. Okay. That's just kind of a demonstration of, of uh, very good. There was a, that was a good demonstration. You can hear the difference, um, definitely from not having it in and making some of those changes. So you um, you went to full sale, and kind of the topic of today is um, music production 
mixing and mastering. Can you have one without the other? Can you talk about a little bit about the mixing piece um, as far as what you're showing us? Okay, so um, so when it comes to mixing, um, one of the best things that I can advise is, um, how do I wanna say this? So there, there's different aspects to, to even mixing. Um, the first thing is that no mix is perfect. So no matter who you are, no matter how good you are, you can be one of the top producers in the world. This is something that I had to learn for myself. No mix will ever be 100% perfect. Um, you want to get it as close to what your um, creative thought is. Um, but sometimes it, it just kind of is what it is. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to have it, you know, sounding crazy and sounding like it's not good work. Um, uh -huh. But you will honestly drive yourself crazy trying to make it like every perfect. single aspect perfect. Um, so that's, that is one of, I cannot stress that enough. If anybody, if you are anything like me, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to music and it takes forever to get things done, uh, you end up holding up a lot of processes when you try to, when you are like that. So I'm even now in the process of learning that sometimes it, 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 you just kind of got, got to go let it, let it be. <laughs> you got to stop some, at some point. So you, you kind of alluded to one of my questions. Um, how much does it, how much time does it take? So we sit back, we turn the radio on, stream or whatever we do, and we enjoy the final products. Mm -hmm. Let's kind of walk through what that entire process looks like yeah. to the point of where we're just kind of, kind of enjoying it. And in the people that are in play from beginning to end. So from the, from the, even the beginning step of the concept, the artist, Okay, we see that because that's what's up front and what, but we're talking about kind of behind the scenes. What does the beginning of that process look like to the point where we're now, oh, they're turning on and bobbing our head. What happens from the beginning to end? So in the beginning, you're going to have a blank session. Um, I'll pull one up for you now. Um, just so you can kind of see. Um, so you start as you as you're showing, you know, you start this process for someone that may not have any idea <laughs> that they're enjoying something that's taking a lot of work. Is this something that happens within a week's time? Um, Is this something that happens within a couple of weeks? So it 100 percent depends on the individual. Uh, it can it can take a week for some people. Sometimes it can take a month for. Um, it all one hundred percent depends on the um, on the the person that's that's you know doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I am currently, as an example, um, in the process of trying to um, be more proactive with with like completing projects. So. Um, building the session, um, creating the song, mapping the song out, and then getting to the mixing and mastering. Because um, one of the biggest mistakes that uh, at least I have made, it, and, and again, it, it works differently for different people. For me, um, I often try to make the song, mix and master the song all at the same time. And that gets very chaotic and very hectic and it gets, it makes it very sloppy. It mm -hmm. makes for a very sloppy process. Um, because then you may mix something a certain way um, and then try to master it, but you haven't even finished the song. So then by the time you go back to trying to do more with the song, now you have to adjust what you've already done uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to the mix and when it comes to um, so I do highly recommend people take things one step at a time. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but that's interesting can, that you say you would even begin to master a song even before you even right. somewhat finished. <laughs> so that's interesting that you would even try, that you would even attempt it. You mentioned another word. Let's talk about mapping. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I've, some students, I think they're going to hear, they hear a finished product or they just, you know, put a couple of beats together, bam, you know, I'm ready to jam. But even to the point of beginning a 
beginning the song from what you do as a um, producer, but even as an artist, what does the word mapping mean and how instrumental is that in this process? So um, that kind of just refers to the, the entire layout of the song. Exactly. Um, it, it does, when it comes to the artist specifically, it does depend on if the artist is a part of that process or not when it comes to creating the actual track. Um, most artists, nine times out of 10, are not very um, involved in this process. Um, I think artists are more so now starting to get involved in this process, especially once they've kind of made a name for themselves. They mm -hmm. wanna be a little bit more part of the creative aspect of their music. Um, but you may hear a lot more um, indie artists um, or there are some prominent artists. I think like Kendrick Lamar is, a, is an example. He is um, very involved in his production. Um, but then you may have someone like, um, I don't know, just to use an example, Katy Perry, who may not be as heavily involved in her production. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to the mapping and layout of the song, they don't really necessarily have much of a say in how, how it goes. That is up to the producers and the songwriters. Um, and you know the label if you if the the artist is on a label kind of how they want things okay um, so yeah and you may map a song out and you know if you are on a label the the label may say okay well we like this mm -hmm. but i don't like that bridge take the bridge out and then leave everything else as it is so it's good to be on the same page because if you had to do that <laughs> and just the having a the musical mindset and understanding the lingo as an artist, I think is important, you know, as far as definitely a producer, because then your song needs to kind of have some type of sequence, you know, or it, like you said, it's just a big, right. big mm -hmm. pile of something. But anyway, go ahead and show us a little bit more about that empty slate and. Oh yeah. Um, just to kind of show you the, the process of building um, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna, you know, play anything on this. I'm just gonna kind of build it out uh, manually. Um, so let's say I'm in my, I'm getting ready to build out a session. Let's say I wanna make a pop type of, of track. So I'll write, well, I already did it, but I'll right click and as you can see here, it says create MIDI region. Um, so that just gave me um, the ability to kind of edit this little MIDI file here. Um, and now I'm going to come here and as you can see- Do you see, always start with your kick? Um, it depends. Okay. It depends my creative process. Sometimes I may go melody first. Sometimes I may go percussion first. I get more results with it when I do percussion first. Melody uh -huh. is a little bit more, because I'm real intricate. I like to do a lot. And and, and I, I was kind of interested to see how were you, you know, where were you were going to start with this? Because it seems to be that, that just kind of that, foundation in the song with that percussion so interesting that that's the first thing you pick yeah I I'll be honest I I used to struggle a lot when it came to the percussion um because mm -hmm. I'm very I, being in band I was not a percussionist I was you know in the low brass section um, what instrument uh baritone euphonium Okay. People don't know what that is, so if you don't yeah. know what that is, okay. <laughs> but well, um, we're in we're in the we're in the business right now of educating, yeah. so we want to put all that out there, um, so students will be familiar with, you yeah. know, and then understanding that even someone that's doing something that you do, mm -hmm. they have, you know, it's it's good to have a musical background because I know some students they just want to go in and start mixing, yeah, producing. Uh -huh. But the fact that you have that musical background and it stems all the way from school, that you learned your notes, you know some scales, you understood some of that foundation that a lot of people want to just jump right through, you know. But me as an educator, I feel that that's important, that foundation. But anyway, we're going to, we just thought I would pull that out, how you, that, that clean slate. And that was the first thing we kind of started with. Yeah. So um, I'm going to start with a kick. Um, as you can see here, here. Um, this is the note that's going to give me the kick. Um, so C1, I'm going to use my editing tool to create um, a MIDI file or a MIDI note, if you will. So, 
So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this um, just to kind of build it out, at least build it out for these um, four bars. Um, copy and paste will definitely be your friend as a, as a producer, I would say. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, so yeah, so. So that just kind of gives you a nice little uh, foundation to work with. Um, you can even manipulate the um, the timing of the kick. So if I want to start off with just a simple uh, on the upbeat of, of the session, but then in the next section, I want to do a I'm gonna do, I think, yeah, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to take all of that out. And for time's sake, I'm going to shorten this. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was what I started with. And then I just moved some of it around. Mm -hmm. So you can move it around. You can add more notes. As you're showing us, I don't want to who can talk as you still kind of, you know, oh, yeah. add in as you're doing. I want to no, you, stop, you are, stop you your are creativity good. as you're working. You are um, how did you know you wanted to to pursue this as your career? Um. So I have honestly. Um, been I've been singing since I was a little kid. I've been um, interested in music since I was yeah. a little kid. Um, my mom will honestly tell you I used to tear up a lot of her hangers because um, whenever we were watching Star Trek at the very end, I was acting like a composer uh -huh. and taking a little. This is back when they had the little cardboard uh, little thing uh -huh. on the hanger. So I used to tear those up all the time because I was acting like I was conducting the, the band playing at the right. end of the um, end of the show. Um, so I've always really felt just this um, emotionally and, and spiritually connected to music. Um, when I got a little bit older, I wasn't really sure about necessarily pursuing it. Um, you know, I was kind of like, I was a bit of an odd kid. You know, I kind of was a bit more reserved. I didn't really do too much. Uh, my parents were trying to put me in sports and all, all that type of stuff. And I hate it. I, I'm not a sports guy. I, I, that's just not me. With music um, was your thing. Yes. My mom was like, well, you're going to, you're going to be doing something. Um, so we tried, we tried piano, um, which I, while I will not claim to be a piano player, um, mm -hmm. I do know my way around a piano. Okay. I know notes, I know chords, but my coordination is not there to where I can do like, what you can do, <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, I, but I got you on. A, I can play a nice little chord on the piano, though. Okay. Um, okay. Um, that chord. The piano didn't really. It it, it definitely helped because that was kind of like my real start with music. Um, but I really, I I just I was a kid. I, I didn't like playing piano. <laughs> so then You're we got super talented. Band. Super talented though. Oh. Um, so we got to band about sixth grade is when they when they introduced that to us. Um, started playing baritone. Mm -hmm. um, kind of found a family in the in the band. I really didn't necessarily care about the instrument I was playing, but I found a family there. Right. And it turned out to actually be really really good at playing baritone. Um, I ended up being one of the top players in my section. Um, we used to do marching band and concert band, so we were touring. Um, across the country, which was very, very um, exciting at that age, you know, exactly. you know, in high school that you would be going on a tour of any of any kind. For sure. But, um, um, so it, it was kind of like a smaller window into what the actual music industry is like. Um, being on a bus with a bunch of people, having to travel around the country and play different concerts and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I did. I, I loved every aspect of it. Um, and I was doing band, I did band up, up through my first three years in college. Um, and I eventually had to make a decision um, okay. because 
I really started to dive heavily into music production and, um, you know, the singing and being an artist and, and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll admit, I did start to kind of fall out of love with band. Um, the, the degree of music education that I was pursuing at the time um, felt very limited to me. Um, just because I, I I didn't necessarily want to be a teacher. I don't mind teaching, but um, just having that as my ultimate career was not really my goal. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of when Full Sail really fell, in, fell into my, I want it, well, it didn't fall in my lap because it was a little expensive, let me not say that. But oh, um, okay, yeah, um, but it definitely, it presented itself to me. Um, and I was very blessed to be able to, uh, get a scholarship with Full Sail um, okay. and to uh, be able to attend the school. But I had to, in order to go to Full Sail, I had to let go of band. And so that was a, a very bittersweet uh, kind of moment for me. Right. I, I'd been in band at that point, I think for nine years. Um, you know, you get accustomed to being in that atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, if I go to Full Sail, I mean, I got to move to Florida no more, you know, because. I, 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 don't, I think we talked about it in the bio, but me being from Texas, I hadn't even left the state before. So it was, it wow. was just like new, new experiences. Um, but do I regret leaving that behind? Absolutely not. Um, I still even dabble in it to this day. Um, I'm definitely nowhere near as good as I used to be when it comes to band. Because um, if you gave me an instrument to play, it would, it would not sound that great. But uh, hey, you're playing all these instruments now via <laughs> me, so you good, you good. You got all you got, all, you got that one plus plus and plenty more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, good. I'm thank you for sharing your story. So um we have Mr. <laughs> Denar, he is just so talented. I, I just gotta say, I, I've been seeing the talent grow and grow just throughout the years, and I'm just personally, I'm just really excited to see what you're doing. Um your experience, uh, you're getting more and more experience, I'm sure, uh, with your, bio, as your bio says, you're working on numerous projects. Mm -hmm. uh, what, I think we tell you that that kind of varies, what's the average time for, I guess, your experience as far as finishing a project from scratch, like we have here on the screen, <laughs> where it's just a clean slate till it's actually ready for someone to turn on and just start bobbing their head and listening. For for you, what what is that? What has what has that time frame looked like? Um, I would say my my quickest time has been about two months. Okay. Um, and the reason why why it is still kind of a long process, um, specifically for me, I don't because I don't have a team. I don't have anyone to send a mix off to for them to mix. Um, I don't have anybody to master for me. I do. I touch every single aspect of what I do. Um, so from building it from scratch, just the building process, of course, takes a, a, a large chunk of that time because you want to make sure it sounds, you know, presentable. Mm -hmm. um, and then getting to the mixing portion of it, um, which depending on the bulk of the session um, can be pretty quick. Um, it also kind of depends on what you want to do. Um, mainly in the vocal department is where the mixing is probably going to take the most work. Um, especially for me, um, I would say I have a huge opportunity when it comes to mix mixing vocals. Um, I'm doing much better than I was way back in the day, but um, it definitely has presented its challenges to me. Um, and then mastering, um, at least for me, is very quick um, because I honestly look at it as kind of like the mixing process anyway. Um, there are definitely pieces of mastering that I will say I'm probably missing out on because I don't have anyone else to do any of this for me and I do everything out of logic. Um, but I, I get my stuff to where it's presentable. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is all, it all again comes down to working with what you have um, and being comfortable and okay with putting yourself out there with what you have. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays it's much, um, easier to do stuff like this so for some people it may take them um only two weeks to make a track and you know record something down to it um me being again i'm a bit of a perfectionist and coming from band i like to have certain notes and i try to make a melody and make it flow and all of that so it takes me it takes me a little bit more time um, do you have a um 
a specific or can you share some of what your projects have looked like or things that you've done? Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, just kind of share. So um, actually this year, I actually released uh, my own single. This, this is my first time doing that. Wow, uh, congratulations. So um, I barely- Why you gotta tell us about it? Where, what's, the, what's the name of it? Give us information about it. Yes. <laughs> So uh, my single is called Focus. Um, it is uh, kind of talking you through, I, I know that, well, I mean, everybody kind of listens to whatever in, in these days anyway. Um, it, it has multiple layers to it. It's okay. a, a um, it does talk about more of a relationship aspect of paying attention to um, the person that you're with, um, making sure that they're happy, that you're happy, all that type of stuff. Um, but it also has an, another layer to it of just focusing, um, okay. like the intention of focusing. Okay. So when you do focus on something, you are trying to complete that task or you're trying to go somewhere with that. Awesome. Um, so yeah. Um, Congratulations. Had, thank you. It, it was, whew, I was definitely kind of beating myself over the head because when I put it out, I was like, oh, I don't know if I like the mix or I don't, I, like I start second guessing and, and yeah. all of that. Um, but, you know, it's out there. It, it is out there and I'm, pr I'm very proud of myself. Yeah. I'm actually um, getting ready. I have another project uh, single that's about to release this coming Saturday um, called Dreality. It is more of a um, instrumental type of, of thing. So there's no real vocals on there. Um, so that literally is just the production aspect of it. Um, it's kind of like a lo-fi hip hop type of type of vibe. Um, okay. It is actually very, very, very um, powerful. That is a okay. very powerful genre. So we're going to have to look out and everybody needs to go out and look for Focus mm -hmm. by Denari mm -hmm. and Dreality. And Drewality reality so it's dream reality. yeah it's a mix of dream and reality yeah reality all right so that's what's up that's what's up um so following your dreams uh you've done how do you say that you are able to um for for someone that's starting or even your, yourself if you're willing to share your your journey your personal experience with being able to balance following your dream because I think this dilemma comes up with anybody that's within the arts mm -hmm. and being able to sustain yourself. You know what I mean by take care of yourself and be able to stand on your own two feet, but yet still and follow. And I think that dilemma and that thought and decision comes up with anybody that's in the arts, being able to do both. Absolutely. Um, so I, I will say you will you will never be able to get where you want to get without sacrifice. Um, you have to kind of make some some decisions. Do you um, do you want to really put forth the time to learn this and and do it and be really really good at it, um, or is this something that's just like a hobby for you? Um, do you do it to just kind of take your mind off stuff? So, so it does depend on where you're coming from with it. Um, but for me, you know, I still work a full-time job. I'm not, you know, I, music is not making me any money like that right now. Um, and when you are in the beginning stages of music, um, the odds of you really making money off of that are very, very, very slim. So you have to um, be willing to do some type of regular job to sustain yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, like I said, I work a full-time job. Sometimes I do overtime at that job. Mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that I'm able to sustain my living. Yeah, I think we need to really kind of bring that reality in for some young people, you know, that you can still follow your dreams, but we also, you know, want to look at the reality of, of how people are able to do that and just knowing, oh, they're not just living off of that gig. They're living off of sacrifice in the daytime and still sacrificing and following their dreams and pursuing that um, in addition to, <laughs> in addition to that. All right, so we're going to get up and wrap up in a little bit. I don't know if you want to, demonstrate anything else that you had kind of started i didn't want to stop you stop you from putting a couple things together if you want i think um you know that's kind of up to you if you want to have some other things you want to show um just to um i guess give you like a quick little um beat making process 
Um, so just to kind of build off of what I what I was doing earlier. So um, specifically with like percussion, um, it's a lot of patterns. Um, I say have at it. Go go crazy with your your creative your creativity with the with the patterns. Um, percussion has been a huge opportunity for me, uh, as I stated earlier, because I'm not a percussionist. Um, so I'm kind of a like, as long as the rhythm sounds good, I, I'm good. But um, I am, you know, kind of pushing myself to get more creative in the aspects of learning different patterns and seeing what works, you know, not being afraid to um, explore different aspects of percussion. Um, so most people I know this generation now, they, they love things like hi-hats and 808s. Those are like the two things that are like the driving forces behind a lot of music uh, these days. Um, and those also happen to be the two things that I struggle the most with. <laughs> um, so it has been a it has been a journey trying to um, you know learn that learn these things and, and kind of um, be able to build things out the way that that I would like to. So, um, but yes. It's real simple. Um, so I usually start with kick, move on to hi-hat in some type of way. I actually like to do two separate hi-hats because um, they have different textures, different uh, pitch levels. Um, so I will um, kind of create like, almost like a counter um, pattern to the hi-hat I already created. Okay. Um, sometimes they'll meet. Sometimes they'll they'll you know venture off and, and separate. Um, so I'm gonna create one little quick little thing here. So that kind of give you a, a little a little idea as to how that goes. Yeah. Now make it a bit more repetitive with the second pattern, um, just because I want to hear how it interacts with the with the other pattern completely. So next I'll go to a clap. Just something real simple. You know, just that's just kind of like a quick little thing. Yeah, I got you. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. So, awesome. I, so we'll do a little bit more, but you know. <laughs> but I'm hearing what you say. I was just saying I, I usually would do a little bit more. Like I'll I'll pull out some some weird instrument just see if I can make it fit in the mix. Yeah, so. definitely. And then you got so much just to kind of add to and play to. It's just like just a playground for creativity. It is a playground of creative so creative <laughs> so many different things and you got each one of those and you can tweak the sound here and there so i know it's just time one of these things i think you think this is really a time sensitive field it just takes time uh, i mean you didn't really kind of push that which i was kind of leaning towards to asking about the time frame but things like this doesn't just happen we just, we enjoy the end product but if yeah. you really think about it the intricate time that's needed to pull this whole concept the idea together when you and, start with one thing yeah and i, I would say again because time time is going to be very different for different people um if you're in the in like actually in, in on a label um you're going to be presented with a, a period of time to do things um that's just because it's, it's more job like it's more like this is the you have a deadline you have to meet um, me as an indie producer and an indie artist, I work on my own schedule. Um, now, granted, that doesn't mean that I shouldn't still push myself to get things done quickly. Right. Um, but um, because I have a big, I have all the creative control myself. Um, a label is a little different. Like I said, they have teams of people that do things. The person that makes the beat doesn't necessarily have to mix it. 
the person that mixes the beat doesn't necessarily have to master it. And none of those people actually have to sing the song. So um, mm -hmm. it is all like there, there's just so many different levels. You could be involved in multiple things. Um, you could be the, the artist and be the songwriter um, right. and be a part of this, uh, this process. Um, you could be the producer and the artist. So it just kind of depends on, on where you are in that little area. Yeah. Well, you're doing some great things. I'm so excited. Excited! I'm so excited. You want to share a little bit about your future goals, and you know, you're talking about, you know, right now you're doing your independent thing. Well, tell us a little bit about maybe where we'll see you in the future, and maybe we'll. Um. So, um, I'm actually um, in the process of uh, working on and finishing my album. Um, I'm also in the process of working on and finishing a lo-fi EP. Um, so those are kind of like my two most important projects for myself. Um, but I also am making music for other people. So I have a few other independent artists that I'm working with, um, some of which will actually also be on my album with me. Um, and um, really just building, um, as crazy as it sounds, because I'm not really a social media guy, but um, building my platform is, is really kind of what I am focused on over the next year, like a couple of years, um, okay. just building and marketing myself. Um, because I, I, I have kind of come to a point where I can say, even if I never became a, a top level producer in the world and everybody knew my name, like I love what I do. So if I can continue to sustain my life and then just create music, I am, I am perfectly okay with that. Mm -hmm. Um, that does not mean that I don't take my craft seriously. That doesn't mean that I don't go hard for what I do. Um, it just means that, um, excuse me, um, that I am okay. I'm 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 at peace with whatever you know, wherever God takes me. Honestly, okay. uh, so yeah, just really building my building my social media platforms, um, putting out more content for people to hear, um, mm -hmm. just to give people you know something, um, especially with this year. You know, it's been a lot going on, and tell um, me about it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And I, I, you know, I, I came into this year and I, t I, you know, actually had a conversation with God and I said, look, I've been talking about doing, doing music. I've talked about releasing music. If I don't release music this year, then I might as well not even continue to do it. Cause I sit, I sit on my stuff for so long. So, mm -hmm. um, so I, I, that was my biggest goal this year. And the fact that I'm releasing two, <laughs> two songs this year is a very huge accomplishment for me. Awesome. Awesome. Congratulations. Uh, well, I look forward to hearing it. I'm looking forward to see it. You put it out there. So I'm expecting it. All right. And we're going to keep in touch. Uh, tell us how to find you, who you are and all that good stuff. So uh, you guys can find me on. Oh, Jesus. I don't really do too much of the social media other than Instagram. Okay. Uh, so Instagram, you can find me at Denary, so um, at D A N A R I I. Um, there is an underscore there, but usually I pop up after you, you know, type it in. So, okay. Um, yeah, I do have a Twitter with the same the same username. If you want to find me there, you can also find me on Facebook um, with that same name. All of my stuff is kind of the same across the board, um, but I am most active on Instagram. I'm not really too active on the other ones. Okay. Well, easy to find. Same name, Denary. Mm -hmm. We're going to remember that. We're going to remember. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, we yeah. thank you. Uh, just sharing your experience, your story. That's kind of what it's all about to see what that journey looks like for a young person that may be pursuing it and may be thinking about it. And what I want to impress is that there is education behind mm -hmm. Mr. Kenny Denari White. I am an educator and I believe in education. Um, yes, I know everybody's route and road to success is different, but equipping yourself with knowledge is important. Equipping yourself to be as prepared as possible. So as we end this night, and I, as I end every show, thank you for joining us as we inspire you to explore the world of music. Thank you. <laughs> well I just I also wanted to say that I know I personally would not be where I am musically if it was not for you um, oh. you, 
And I know we used to be some some not head kids. Ooh, oh, I, I just enjoyed y'all so much. <laughs> I enjoyed y'all. Just, just a joy to see the talent. The talent. Yes, and give. Yes. And I think what I do, it just kind of is natural because I, I just have a knack for kids. I've been in education for so long. And then I know for me, just I don't know if I shared this with you earlier, the idea just came because I realized for our students and our community, we don't have access to information as mm -hmm. easily accessible. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God, I don't know how you're going to do this or what you're going to do, because I don't have a big, like you were talking about social media, I don't have a big platform, a big network, but the idea and the concept is to allow an opportunity, another avenue to bring our young people up close, front and center to an artist, ask the question, you know, you can go to a concert, but you don't get to sit and talk and ask questions. How did you get there? What were some of your hurdles? I think kids need to understand the road is not going to always be easy. Understanding some of the roadblocks that you're going to encounter, understanding that some of the things that you're going to, you know, see is not always lights, hammer, you know, action. There are some things in understanding the education because some students, they see, oh, they're doing this and that, but they don't know the story. Yeah. Okay. So that, that that's kind of the whole concept and ideas, understanding the story. So then that's a little bit more relatable. So hopefully what I can do is reach as many young people, as I say, explore the world of music. You know, you definitely reach me. And I, I, again, I truly thank you from the bottom of my heart. I would oh, be, thank you. I would not be anywhere near where I am right now. If it was oh, thank you. Thank you. Y'all were so sweet. Y'all, y'all bless me, bless my soul. And <laughs> it's just exciting to see you pursuing music. And even more so, you had the time to stop and say, what well, Miss Clarissa Walt and say, yeah, I can I'll chip in and share what I know. You know, every every little bit, you know, I believe in a village, you know, yes. what you have to offer is going to help somebody. What I have to offer is not everybody, but somebody can be, you know, more empowered or informed or make a better decision or realize, oh, I need, you know, I can pursue music. Oh, I need to have another job too. <laughs> <laughs> you know I, this is going to reality yeah. that's the real reality you know until you get to the point where maybe things will change for you so right and i would i would say even to to you know kids that see this if you can find people that understand your vision by all means collaborate and, and cooperate um that is honestly how um you will make it where you want to go um, when you have your own people around you that you trust, that you you know are going to build you up, that you can also build up. Um, I used to be be in a uh, on a bit of a team, if you would, um, for a while. And while that opportunity didn't necessarily work out, um, I do not discredit the the way that that worked, especially now with social media and all, all of that type of stuff. People have a group a small little group that they just work together and they create content and they make um they make themselves successful um, mm, okay fine if you have people around you that believe in you uh if you don't have people that that believe in you find people that do mm -hmm. um, and work together build together because i think like, that's the story right there because sometimes the people you think are the ones that's going to support there's people that it could be total strangers there are people that will god will place the right people around you to get his vision and purpose accomplished absolutely yeah i highly encourage people to, to to look into that okay awesome well i think you and atl so it's a little bit later there for you <laughs> but we gonna go ahead and go i appreciate it and we yeah. do a part two whenever you get ready Oh, yeah, I would definitely be hitting you up for that. <laughs> yes, peace out. <laughs>